The next speaker is going to tell us about a solution that will help develop multimodal data sources and receive results comparable with uh, results applied for continuous learning. Please welcome Chief Engineer of Robotics Lab at Burbank, Alexei Posnikov. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alexei Postnikov. Uh, you already know who I am, so let us get down to the presentation. I wanted to tell about uh, human trajectory, trajectory prediction. Usually, we're uh, doing trajectory prediction for humans and cars, but let us talk about why, where, and how it can be applied in the environment of autonomous driving. There is a pipeline. It's already a traditional pipeline of autonomous navigation. Every robot, whether it's a small autonomous robot uh, moving along the sidewalk or a large um, driverless car driving on the road, there's a set of sensors that it's using uh, to get raw data. Raw data get into the system that we call perception system. In perception system, there are de detection, segmentation, and uh, depth prediction um, algorithms. And then process data get into prediction system. And myself and my colleague will tell you about prediction exactly. The task of prediction module is to predict how environment is going to change around the robot in the nearest future. And then all this data get into planning system it plans trajectory of movement based on the prediction data it generates the safest and uh, the most optimal route let me repeat primarily is doing that thanks to the fact that our prediction system is quite uh, good at prediction the situation around the robot this is why planning system can safely plan the route now, the slide is going to show visualization system from um, the recent uh, test. In red, you can see a test car. In green, you can see the route of the car, the planned route. In yellow, you can see active cars that are driving with, with the driver inside. We can see that our um, car makes a decision to drive the first. It's quite a narrow road, and every time when there is an ongoing car, we make a decision whether we uh, let the other car pass the first or we, whether we go the first. Now we see another ongoing car. It's moving quite fast, and here we can see two scenarios. Either the yellow car is stops and gives the way to us, or it goes the first. In this case, uh, prediction trajectory pred pred prediction system, um, the probability is high that the oncoming car will go the first, and Tesla car was supposed to give way, and it changed the route in order to avoid a collision. Now let's discuss what are the types and formats of motion prediction and how it can be predicted. Since we work in autonomous navigation system, then usually the most popular format for data prediction for future prediction is a sin single trajectory pr prediction. For every dynamic object, we predict one most probable trajectory. But as we all know, uh, humans are quite chaotic creatures, and sometimes it's very difficult or impossible to predict what, what a person is going to do next. For instance, if you're driving, and oftentimes you have seen situations when a driver is doing an abrupt move without any signs, and it's very difficult to predict it in advance. And this is why, in order to um, navigate in this situation, you need to um, predict not one trajectory, but many trajectories. On top of that, in literature, we always see methods that predict future paths, future trajectory, trajectory with the bounding boxes or um, 
its Gaussian distribution, uh, statistical distributions map, or future map can be made. It will show uh, which spot is going to be vacant and which spot is going to be taken on the road. Also wanted to mention that in the last two or three years, um, a lot of new data sets became available. For instance, seven new data sets became available. Two of them became available last year. Three of them became available this year from subsidiary um, business from Google. It's subsidiary of Google. It's Waymo and from Yandex. As to algorithms themselves, there are a lot of algorithms that are predicting trajectories of movement. I will describe only one of them now. It's based on deep networks. If you are connected with deep learning, at least to some extent, and I'm sure you have heard that in recent years, uh, there became available a new architecture model that has proven to be efficient on big data. It's a model based on attention or transformer architecture. They mm, became available in NLP and natural language processing, but in recent years they had been um, proving their efficiency in all the tasks uh, involving big data. In our case, we decided to try to, to use a transformer architecture as well. And this year, DeepMind, which is well known, has published a new architecture. It's efficient in processing different multimodal data. This model is based on two mechanisms, self-attention and cross-attention. In this case, incoming data are processed with the help of cross-attention, which helps preserve, um, preserve the space inside compared to incoming data, and it sorts out one of the main uh, transformer um, restriction, which is the space required for um, processing of um, outgoing data. If you try to um, interpret how this model works, then we can say that we are iteratively trying to uh, reveal useful data from the incoming raw data, and uh, we're uh, iteratively adding our understanding of the environment, and we're adding new data with every layer. Initially, when the model had not seen the data yet, it already has um, pre-generated um, vector, pre-generated data either ran randomly or according to its own internal vector. Uh, when the data come to the model for the first time, then it, it creates a query matrix. It can be interpreted um, in a way that it's questioning the incoming data, and then step by step we are questioning the incoming data, but uh, with every subsequent step from the first step, the, met the query matrix is done in such a way that we know information from previous data sources. So it can be interpreted in such a way that every time the model is clarifying some uh, fine moments based on the initial data, and this is one of the main uh, differences of this approach compared to the others. This architecture from cross-attention or self-attention uh, stacks and number of times after that uh, there it makes a prediction on what model will be run we decided to adapt it to um, uh, trajectory prediction task since we have a few multimodal sources of data first of all a map of surroundings, uh, historical data of observations uh, over all the uh, neighbors around the agent and position of the agent itself. For every source of data, we use a separate module of cross-attention. We bring them together, and on top of that, we added two more models. It's a goal decoder and trajectory decoder. They predict a set of most probable uh, trajectories of our agent. And knowing goals, so they, first they um, predict, predict the goals, and when we know the goals, we uh, determine the trajectories, predict trajectories. And our work that is soon to be published, we uh, prove efficiency 
and efficacy of uh, this model. We obtained results that are comparable with state of the art. However, this approach has advantage um, thanks to the fact that we uh, can use the structure of the model without any adjustments practically, and we can use additional sources of data. For instance, it may be point clouds. They are large, and with the help of this method, we can efficiently add these data into prediction system. Having analyzed uh, mistakes, the having analyzed uh, errors that are made by uh, the model, we came to a conclusion that in the majority of cases, in more than 50% of cases, accuracy of prediction of a person position in five or eight seconds um, is less than one meter. So we predict with accuracy of one meter. But there is a small number of scenarios where we have huge errors. And this is because a human is quite a complex uh, creature and it's hard to predict um, what, the, what the person will do. It means that this error will be relevant for quite a number of years to go. On top of that, I wanted to emphasize that we have assessed efficiency of our model. Mm, we applied, we uh, were showing it on shift challenge competition uh, from Yandex that uh, got completed uh, just a few days ago. We were using this model with a few more modernization and our model has shown the best result in terms of accuracy of uh, cars trajectories in, in in urban environment this was the subject and we were ranking number one so that's it for me thank you very much for your attention i'll be happy to answer your questions if you have some interesting questions for joint studies joint research please get in touch with me on the email that you ha can see on the slide